Sam, hey guys, you are, you came on a right Sunday. If it's your first time here, you came literally on the perfect Sunday. Uh, uh, today, uh, we have a, a guest speaker, not really a guest to me. Um, I, you know, in, in life, you know, I, I feel like everyone needs a pastor. Even pastors need a pastor. Like even uh, me, I need somebody who I can look up to, who I can uh, have call me out, who I can have say, hey, are you loving your wife? Are you loving your kids? And this is the person who took a chance on me about seven years ago, I, I believe. And I was in Orlando, Florida, and uh, we were looking for, about what was next. And I didn't have my life all together. Uh, but this uh, uh, gentleman, this pastor, Pastor Sean, took a, took a chance on me seven years ago, allowed me to be on staff at Cornerstone Assembly of God, where a lot of us and where this church was birthed out of, out of. And, you know, three years ago, we came to him with this dream of starting a life-giving church right here in this area. And he was all about it, man. He's resources, giving us people, money, and made this thing happen. Uh, and so this is his first time since launch day that he's back with us. And so we're so excited to have him bring the word here today. The Motivation Church doesn't exist without his generosity. And uh, I am so grateful. You should be grateful for the awesome Pastor Sean, because we make some noise as he comes up and bring the word. So, Pastor Sean, uh, just to let you know, um, you know, a part of that Motivation Church, so whenever we have a guest speaker, they do like a quick 30-second dance. I knew that was uh, coming. A hip-hop dance. So, yeah. uh, Dale, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I, so, yeah. <laughs> I got to break out the moonwalk from way back. There and, we go. Uh, there we go. Cool. At the end of the service. We call him white chocolate guy. There you so, go, amen for I white chocolate. I can play chocolate. ball. That'll help. I play ball. Man, good morning, everybody. It is great to be with you. It really is a tremendous honor for me to share. I've been looking forward to this day. You are in my heart every week, and every week I get to talk with Pastor Travis. I get to hear about this amazing church family that you guys are, and I just want you to know you have so many people who love you dearly and pray for you, and I just want to say thank you for the way you're saying yes to God in every little step and all of the big steps are in this room, and I'm excited to take a little time to share with you. I'm going to get right to it because this is my one chance. I pray for you all the time, and this is my one chance just to pour into you. And I know you're in this series called Dream Again. And so I wanted to share with you, well, we're thinking about all of our dreams, and we need to remember that our dream isn't even close to as big as the dream that God has for you. I mean, the scripture tells us what he's planned to do for your life, you cannot even possibly imagine. But I, I want you to see what God's biggest dream is. Because there is, if you understand this one dream, if you understand what God is about, it's going to help you make sense in everything you're going through. And it'll give you a wisdom to figure out the right answer when nobody else seems to have the answer. That's how important this is. You'll see, I, I, I gave you a little handout on God's biggest dream. And I said this. I said, no matter how different, disqualified, or disowned we have felt, God wants us to be part of one great and eternal dream, one that heals our own hearts, heals the wounds, heals the, the world, and takes every pain of life and turns it into victory. And here is the absolute one dream that God's dreaming, and it's this, more family. Can everybody say that with me? More family. That is what God is about. I want you to think about this. When we talk about God as Trinity, which none of us can quite explain, we refer to him as how? Father, Son, Holy Spirit. What are we talking about right there? God himself is and shares this heart and is all about family, but he's not just about family. He's about more family. That's why he created us. That's why he made this world, because he's interested in more family. And he wants us to be part of it, and he wants us to be part of helping others know it. And if you will understand this one element, that everything about life is about connected to the biggest dream that God has, more family, You'll have a wisdom and understanding. You'll see in the middle of what Pastor Travis is talking about, when everything looks wrong, you'll discover what's right and what God is doing. So let's admit, let's admit something about family. Uh, at Cornerstone, we always say that uh, family is just another word for crazy. Can I get an amen? All right, yeah, family's absolutely crazy. And uh, in every family, there is definitely some crazy. And if you don't know who it is in your family, it's you. 
All right? Welcome to Revelation at church on Sunday morning. You're the crazy in your family. And family is this crazy thing that often hurts us and is often our biggest struggle. And yet it's something that God wants to use in us that we don't understand. And because we're broken and because we're struggling, our families usually struggle. So at worst, families can, man, they can really just bring a lot of pain to our life. At best, they tend to just kind of be awkward. And uh, one of my family's favorite uh, games to play is awkward family photos. Anybody ever play it before? Nobody. I'm about to introduce you to this. Get ready, okay? Because there's no question that families are just awkward. I mean, who decided this was a good family picture, all right? And there's no question that sometimes families just make us scared. I mean, we're trying to love each other, but we're, we're not doing a good job. Uh, where do I even begin with this picture? I mean, where are we going to go with this picture? Are we going to start with the hair or the puppet in the middle of the family? I'm not sure where we're going with that. I mean, there's no question that some of us in our family are doing bad all by themselves, but they ain't keeping it to themselves, right? I mean, is that true? That's true. And uh, yes, yeah, sometimes as parents, we make mistakes. I'm like, how did this picture photo shoot end? I mean, was the last picture at the hospital? Is that where we took this? And uh, yeah, and then, you know, there's some, yeah, I, where do you even, what do you say about this one? I mean, what family thought, you know, we're going to take a picture. Let's have a machete and a parrot. I mean, where did that one come from? I mean, family is absolutely crazy. It's just how it is. But here's what I want you to realize. God wants to turn the word family into healing for you. And it probably seems impossible. Probably seems the one thing that can happen. It's probably, probably for most of us, it's the one thing we're running away from. And yet what God wants to do is says, I want to start you on a new family. We're going to talk about how church is absolutely the beginning. And when we start understanding his family, we'll start figuring out our family. So the answer isn't, let me go fix my family. The answer is, let me fit in to this family first. And when I start figuring out this one, my father in heaven, my elder brother Christ, the son, the Holy Spirit, when I begin to understand that, I begin to walk in a very different way with physical family, but in every type of relationship I'm in. And so I want to share that just for a few minutes about what family is really all about because that is God's greatest dream. A matter of fact, it says in the scripture when we all one day are in heaven and celebrating God's faithfulness and celebrating Jesus, Romans 7, 9, after this I saw a vast crowd too great to count from every nation and tribe and people and language standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb and they were shouting with a great roar salvation come comes from our God who sits on the throne of heaven one day all our family is going to be together it's not just his greatest dream now for you one day it's the greatest joy of all of our lives lots of different people with lots of different stories lots of people who don't really understand what family has looked like families have done it way different than yours and one day God's bringing it all together and when you remember that Jesus said thy kingdom come thy will be done on uh, on earth as it is in heaven God's starting to build this now and that's what you are that's what you are and if uh, you know we've all got some interesting church stories right I mean, we got some interesting church background. And uh, if we'll start realizing that church isn't the, aren't those experiences, it's all about this big dream God has, we'll start, I mean, we'll start seeing amazing things happen in our midst. So I love this verse. It's Romans 8. It's uh, verse 11 through 15. It's in your notes there. I'm hoping you'll use this as prayer. In that box there, you should have put God's biggest dream. It's more family. That's his dream. All right, and this verse in Romans 8:11 tells us that you have not received a spirit that makes you slaves again to fear. Instead, you have received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. So most of us think of Christianity and we think about heaven and hell and we think about salvation versus not being saved. But you need to understand that from the very beginning, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who created this whole world, that salvation is not just death to life, but salvation is alone to family. 
And if you don't understand that part of what it is to be saved and to know Christ, something will always not quite work for you and not quite fulfill you because it's not just that you are saved and going to heaven. Guess who's going to be in heaven? A family of a father that's better than you ever dreamed and brothers and sisters that finally get to do it all right. And it's going to be so amazing. So I want to talk about this idea of what families do, right? You know, in my family, and I'm going to show you a picture of them in a second, you know, I've got four kids. I've got 21 to 11, and uh, it's a joy, and it's craziness. I see, I see dad and mom over here, and isn't it just nice that the kids are just sitting there? So it's, isn't that a wonderful moment? I say I love my kids, and I love them when they sleep. It's just I love them in both areas, all right, and sometimes a little bit more when they sleep. It's like this is a wonderful, wonderful moment that they're sleeping. But... Um, it, when, but so in our family, like we'll talk about chores, like Saturday is chore day and everybody's got to do it. And what, you know what we say? Like nobody gets paid for that. That's just what families do. Families just are together. That's what they do. And most of us have not learned that. And most of us who are parenting haven't learned it, but we're trying to figure out how to give it. So there's just this process in our life. And again, if we'll come part of this family, we'll absolutely figure out this family. So that's the answer. We don't have to have, we don't have to have had the model to do it right because he is our model. Isn't that good news? I mean, that gives us a lot of us hope. Say, I can do this right because I can do it based off of him. So that's what God wants to give us. So Romans 8 says that what a family does is it saves us from fear. I want you to think about this now. Family takes away the slavery of fear in your life. All right? That's what Romans 8 says. It says you're not slaves again to fear, but you've been adopted into a family. So what families do is they take fear away from us so we can feel free to love and grow and thrive the way we're supposed to be. And I want you to pay attention to this idea that there's some things that families do that really nobody else can do in our lives. And it's, not, it's beautiful that we have friendships, and sometimes our friend circle is that spiritual family, that emotional family that does this for us. But I want you to look at this. Uh, families, they rescue us from the fear of not having enough, of not being protected, and really not becoming great. The idea of uh, I'm not worth anything, I'm not going to become something. Families are what save us from that fear. Now, here's what I want you to say. The Bible shows us in Romans 8, I just read it, Ephesians 1, 5, it says the same thing, that the way you and I are family is we've been adopted into the family. So we were not, we were not of that family. We're not, we're sinful, we're broken. I always think of sin as just another word for selfishness. We all know we're selfish. I'll hurt you for me if it's better for me. And so it's the idea of like, I'm broken. I don't know how to have family. But what God does through sending Christ is he doesn't just forgive us of our sin, but he brings us into the family. And here's why this topic is so, why I'm so passionate about. Because this is my family. All right, a lot of you know this family of mine. There's my wife, Sarah, in the middle, my daughter, Rachel. There's Kate. I did realize this is Kate with braces on. She's going to kill me for showing this picture. So everybody pretend like you didn't see the braces. All right, there's my daughter, Melody, and there's Caleb. And, uh, you know, we're all working together, and Caleb was born in Ethiopia, and, uh, but was always, always part of our family. I always say, like, he was never not ours. He just, well, we just weren't there when he was born, all right? But there's this beautiful thing about what God did. And when God took me through the journey of adoption, I got this moment. I was like, oh, that's how this works. Like, that's how this works with you. And, uh, you know, sometimes we try to be cool with each other, but that doesn't quite work. Uh, but, uh. Here's the first picture I ever got of Caleb. First picture. Had already always seen him in my heart. Never saw him with my eyes until this picture came across the internet. And uh, let me tell you about when I picked, when, uh, Caleb, when my wife and I went to Ethiopia, which Danny and I and a few of us are going to be going back to soon. When we came to Ethiopia, and uh, so, so Caleb didn't come to us. Family went to him. God came to us, said, come on, be part of my family. That's what happened. 
And we came, and the moment we got him, it was this amazing moment. I can't put it into words. But here's what happened. All of a sudden, Caleb, who had, he was two and a half when he came into the family he was always supposed to be in, was two and a half. But until that time, he had been in orphanages and, and transition homes. And so guess what? Because he had started out like an orphan, he had all these habits. And he had all these mindsets. Now he was in a family, but even though he was in a family, all his habits were how? Well, the orphan habit and the habit of of being alone. And so although he was experiencing family and he was physically in a room with family and it was a family that was around him, he had to figure out how to be part of the family. And I'm telling you, that's what happens to us spiritually all the time. So remember I said that uh, one of the things that a family does to rescue a person is that they remember that there's always going to be enough then. Like God's going to take care of them. Caleb, all right? All right, we're in. We're three days in in Ethiopia. He's with us. We're back at our hotel, and we give him something to drink. And I've got this huge cup of water, and it's filled high. And I take some. like, oh, Caleb, you want some? Now, he doesn't speak any English, okay? So we're kind of working it out as we go. And he's like, he's motioning. He wants some water. So I give him the cup of water, and the dude takes it and plants the lid, like, on his forehead. Like, he just doesn't take a sip. Like, he goes like this. And I'm kind of like, whoa, whoa, okay, well, I guess you're thirsty, but I guess at this point you'll start. And for the next 15 seconds, that cup does not come down. But this kid guzzles it and guzzles it and guzzles it and guzzles it. And I'm like, what is going on? Like, he can't be that thirsty. He puts it down totally empty and then proceeds to throw it all up, all right? So next day we're back at the transition home where he was at. And I'm like, hey, I'm talking to his nanny. I'm like, so uh, we're in the middle of, like, just getting a drink of water. And I've noticed every time I get a drink of water, like, if I don't take it away from him, no matter whether he wants it or needs it, he takes all of it. What's going on there? And she said, oh, well, let me explain what happens in the orphanage. You see, when it's mealtime, all the kids, including Caleb, they sit in a semicircle, and one cup comes around. And what all the kids figure out pretty soon is that cup's only coming around once. So no matter how thirsty they actually are, when that comes around, since it ain't coming again, they take it all and they drink as much as possible. See, that's an orphan spirit. That's being in a church and being saved, but thinking I'm so afraid because of blessing or good opportunity or this one moment, it's only coming now. It's like, no, 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 you're not an orphan anymore. You're in a family. And what we had to teach Caleb was the whole idea of like, Caleb, you don't have to worry and in fear, always take, relax, enjoy where you're at because guess what? When you need more, the families going to make sure you have more. And you and I, how many relationships have we broken by being like Caleb in that relationship? We take so much because like, it's only you and I have to have all this now and this is the way it works and if this doesn't work, we end up breaking it because we hold it so tight. No, no, see that's an orphan spirit but when I know my father in heaven is gonna be with me and gonna take care of me, I could say thank you. Oh, by the way, would you like some? Oh, that person over there, they need some. I'm not just going to think about how much I'm going to have. I'm going to give. And that's when you're in a family, you can do that. When you're in a family, you don't ever worry about not being protected. First time uh, Caleb ever ran into our family dog. We, to the adoption process, like two years long, you read all these books, you get all these trainings, and then we come in, we get all this ready, and we come in and when our dog shows up, our a chocolate lab, who's like part of the family, Caleb like violently shakes and screams. And we're like, what is going on here? All right? What is going on here? And so for literally the first two weeks of Caleb being home back with us, like the dog could not be in the same room with him. And uh, we had figured out, uh, we had sent an email, said, yeah, he got attacked once by a dog. And uh, so he's afraid. And the whole deal was Caleb had this issue of like, I'm not going to be safe. And so it's, I've got to figure it out. But families protect us. Families take care of us. And what families do is, in the end, they make sure we're going to be who we're going to be. A part of Caleb's Ethiopian name is Geremu, and it's kind of a William. 
in, in Ethiopia, in Amark. And, uh, but we wanted to make sure that his name was, we believe one day maybe the Lord will send him back to Ethiopia, you know, and kind of do the Moses thing and go back and be such a big part of, of what God's called him to be. So uh, we went with Caleb because uh, Caleb in uh, Ethiopia and here it's common so he could kind of go back and forth without it being a big deal. And, you know, when Caleb was trying to get used to being called Caleb, here's how he learned it. He was in a family that said, Hey, Caleb, don't go there. Hey, Caleb, put that down. Caleb, don't stick that in the electrical socket. Caleb, you probably shouldn't put that in your mouth. Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. By the way, Caleb, Caleb, Caleb. Pretty soon, he knew his name. Because what a family did was always remind him who he is. Look, you're about to, you got some small groups to be a part of coming up. You know what you do there? You start remembering who you really are there. You know, marriage groups, money groups, like you just, what you start doing is family helps you understand who you are. So I'm going to encourage you that that is God's dream. That's what families do. And I tell you what, I'll tell you what they love. Families love more family. I mean, they just love it. They want one more person in. They just want to, I mean, you know, when you do whatever version of family that you enjoy or a group of friends that you really love to be around, I mean, what's the ultimate joy? That a few of them show up? No, that all of them show up. And the scripture says that God is that way about us. You see the scripture in Luke 14 when, when Jesus is talking about how he feels about letting other people know who he is and says, go quickly and invite everyone. The master told his servant, go out to the roads and the back streets and make them come in so that my house may be full. God is all about family. He's all about you being part of that family, but he wants you to bring somebody else in. So I tell you what, we did this giant, we did this giant uh, season of stretching and giving. Like, I mean, we didn't have the money for this and stuff, but we just gave as God called us to give because there was another family member that was always meant to be with us, but we, we just didn't have them yet. And so we just gave. And then one day the Lord said to me, Sean, Ethiopia has given so much to you. It's time for you to give so back to Ethiopia. I want you to take your family and I want you to go serve in Ethiopia together. Now, where we serve, and, and Motivation Church is part of this, and, and uh, one of your members is going to be traveling with me on Thursday, 7,485 miles uh, to get there. Uh, but what we do is we serve uh, 100 miles away from the Somali border in Ethiopia. And um, it's, it's, you know, the embassy says, you can go there, just, you know, pay attention kind of thing, be, be smart. Right? And some people wouldn't go, but we go. And I didn't mind going myself, but then God said, I want you to take your family, and I want your whole family to love another family. That's what the Lord said. So uh, I took my whole family to a place where CNN said, that's probably not a good idea, Fox News, right? And uh, there we are. There's some of my family. This is the sponsorship program that we do. These kids are part of a school system that Motivation Church, and as you guys are developing, you guys actually feed into these lives in an amazing way. And uh, there, there, my kids made friends with people that the world says you can't be friends. There's Christians and really devout Muslims. We're in English school together. The school system was what Motivation Church is all about. And we're just having an amazing time. And God is showing me that family's bigger than the family I've had. And uh, I think my wife's in here. I love this picture. I just like, talk about heaven. You know, talk about the beauty of people coming together. And, and this is what God is doing. He's bringing together family. Now, we need to remember at church, that's who we are. So we should be different. We should, like, we don't not sign up for a group because, well, I don't know if anybody's like me in the group. It's like, no, that's probably exactly why you should be there. It's because it's about more family, about giving to each other. But as God does this, what happened was uh, literally, and someday Pastor Travis will tell this story, we've got a sister church over there now. We've seen Muslims come to Christ where they've never come to Christ. And there's, and there's joy. Uh, I can't wait to go. When we go back, we're going to say hi to our friends, people that are part of our family. Some who believe and some we don't believe yet, but they are absolutely part of our family because God's about them. That's what a family loves to do, bring in more family. But uh, what a family works, this is how it works. Families always give. In my family, here's the thing we say. I say that cornerstone too. No family works unless everybody gives something to make it work. 
Like, you ever been in a family where one, it revolves around one person? Yeah, that's not a fun family. Families work when everybody gives something to make it work. And so what we're called to do as a family is how can we give to make more family? And you'll see that scripture, 1 Thessalonians 2.8. We loved you so much that we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well, because you had become so dear. And here's what I want to encourage you. It was about three, four years ago, God, oh, okay, so about seven years ago, God said, Sean, you got three great girls. It's really wonderful. I want you to risk all that, and I want more to be in your family. Learn another culture learn. I mean, my wife is from three girls. So when she had a boy for the first time, that was like, what in the world is happening? Okay. Where, where she literally called me up, say, I've got no clue what's going on right now. Uh, and then a few years later, God said, you know, where's like, man, we've done it. We gave, we've become this family that I can't imagine ever not being a part of. And then God said, now I want you to go, I want to take your family and go give some more. I went to Ethiopia, and then we met all these people or did our hearts like, wow, I can't imagine my life without these people, with caring and giving. And I came back from that church about three years ago, and then uh, God said to me, Sean, now what you did with your physical family, I want you to do with your church family. Pastor Travis came, and we started talking. and said, what if we could again take a family and say, let's go find more family. Let's just give. Let's just sacrifice. Let's just, let's, just, let's just do it because the Father's greatest dream is more family. And here all of you are. And so many more that God is transforming. And just what I just want to say to you today is not only is family the place for you, because come on, some of us, we think hard equals strong. So we're pretty hard because we've been hurt. Well, let me tell you what. In a hurricane, you know what trees fall first? The hard ones. You know what trees stay up? The ones that got some give to it, got a little sway to it. They're strong. They're not hard. And I want to tell you, church is a place where we learn what strength is. And I just literally, I shared actually with one person during greeting time. I can tell in this room, I can tell that God is saying, hey, family equals healing in this place. You're here. You're here. You don't ever have to worry about not having enough, not in this place. You don't ever have to worry. You don't have to worry about not being protected. You're going to be protected in this place. And let me tell you what, you're going to find out who you really are in this place. And then I want to tell you this, family works when it decides to give a little bit more. And you guys just finished 21 days of prayer and fast and you gave in an amazing way. And I know, even just talking to Pastor Travis and Brittany, you got, you got more family coming. I'm letting you know now. And when God says give, give. Because I'm telling you what, all these years later, I walk, in the, I walk in Walmart with Caleb and we'll be goofing around and everything. And every once in a while, someone will be looking at us a little odd, right? And I forget. Like, I forget that we're not the same skin color and that I just don't think about that. And they look at us, and then they talk with us a little bit. And then somehow it's like this moment where God uses it, where God takes all these different people who the world says, what are you guys all doing together? Like, why, are you, why are you guys together? It says, well, let me tell you about the heart of God. And I'm just letting you right now. That's what God's going to do with Motivation Church in this next season. You've got more family. You've got more family. So, Pastor Travis, I just want to... Uh, invite you up to finish up this family time. And I do want to say a prayer for everyone here and for you as uh, you and Brittany and the elders continue. And I just, I just want to let you know, I love you. I wish I could be here every Sunday with you. I am in spirit and I want you to know, well done, well done. I hope you know the fire's up. I just want to say a word of prayer, Pastor Travis, and give it to you if that's all right. I'm going to ask you right now, if you wouldn't mind just reaching a hand out towards me, kind of like, since we can't just all if we could. So Lord, I just right now, Lord, I just bless every family member in this family. And I declare that it is a new season and a new gift and healing, Lord, and a new joy. Lord, I say yes and amen to how much you love them and how much you're going to use them 
and the joy that they are. I bless them now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And everyone said, amen. Come on, can we give God a hand clap for the word? I tell you what, it, we, uh, it's kind of crazy. You know, we, did, we did ministry together for six years. And, uh, you know, the, the, world, the world doesn't, you know, if you watch the news or whatever, you listen to, like, the headlines, like, the world doesn't make this happen, right? The world wants this to be a gap between, um, you know, me and him, black and white. And as you look around this room, you look, you look around this church, like, we are a super diverse church, right? And, and I think that's what God is doing is that he's bringing a diverse family together. And we all may not fit every now and then. We might sing a song that some of you may not like or we might do something that you may not like or, you know, I just might get black and start preaching real hard sometimes. Come on, somebody. Maybe. Probably not. Probably not. Um, but, but the cool thing is that, you know, it's special when God can bring a diverse group of people together uh, to do something special. And I just want to let you know, as Pastor Sean said, we are going to, we are four months old, and we are getting ready to invite a huge, bigger family, right? Today's going to be the first time we've ever given you an invite card as you leave today. And only because, like, we just felt like we need to get ready, kind of learn how to do a Sunday service. But now, I feel like we are ready. Our kids' ministry is ready. Our service team is ready. Our worship team is ready to receive more people into our family. Are, are you guys ready Amen. with us? Amen. May it be so. May it be so. Change the world. Amen. Hey, would you all close your eyes and bow your heads in this moment? I just want to pray for somebody who, man, you might be here today. You might say, you know what, uh, Travis, I am not part of the family of God. You know, I've never made a choice to say yes to God because when you say yes to God, you say yes to family. And so I want to, I want to, I want to invite you into this family. You, you may have been hurt by family. You may have experienced brokenness with family. But what I want to do is that I want to encourage you in this moment to know that God is calling you in to be in this family. So he's calling your name. He's saying, I know that you may have experienced hurt. I know you may have experienced brokenness. But me as your father, I'm going to love you. I'm going to heal you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call you to a new level of life and how to do life. So that's you today. You say, you know, I want to give my life to Jesus and join this family for the first time. Man, if that's you, would you slip your hand up? And we know how to pray with you. Would you slip your hand up. Amen. Amen. I, I, I want to also pray for those. Amen. Praise God. I, I want to pray. I want to pray with those who, man, you, you feel like, You've been hurt by family, and it's really hard for you to trust another family. It's really hard for you to kind of uh, let yourself be vulnerable to, to, to experience somebody uh, loving on you and loving on your family. If that's you, we want to pray for you as well. So let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every single person in this room, God. I pray for those, those hands that was raised. God, would you just touch those people? God, would you, uh, would, would you just allow them to know that they are in a family of God now and their lives are forever changed and never be the same, God. Lord, I pray for those who, who feel like they have, not, uh, they have not had the right family in their lives, God. They've been broken and, and they experience pain. God, would you allow this church to be a church that brings healing to their lives, to allow them to stand up, up beside them in their dreams and their goals and to make sure that it happens in the name of Jesus, God. So, God, we thank you for this day. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name and all God's people said. Come on, let's give God a hand clap. Would you stand with me? Amen. Uh, man, so uh, I, I want to encourage you. So we just finished our 21 days of fasting and prayer. So we are done. Last night, my wife and I had some chicken for the first time in 21 days. Uh, so we're fasting 21 days. And so to celebrate that, we have outside what we have, what we call is a donut wall. We, we literally created a wall filled with donuts, okay? Because we believe that the Holy Spirit is also mixed in with Krispy Kreme uh, glaze sauce. Come on, somebody. So 
We got a Krispy Kreme donut wall outside. Hey, if you are, you want to attend our uh, Discover Growth Track. It's 45 minutes, childcare, lunch provided. Anybody can attend. And it's basically, you get to learn more about our church. And today you learn about how you can get involved and figure out how you can join one of our dream teams we have at our church. Man, I'm telling you, Motivation Church, man, the best is yet to come. In fact, I want to make this quick announcement. To next week, everybody say next Sunday. Next Sunday. We got a huge announcement that we're going to make at the church. I believe it's going to be a game changer for this church. And I want you to invite some people to come with you. This announcement is so big, I had to take time to learn how to say it. Wow, that's how big it is. And so I want you to invite some people with you to come out next Sunday. We got a huge announcement that literally is going to change. And we, we are praying for miracles in the 21 days of fasting and prayer. And let me tell you this, God worked out a miracle for us in this house. And so it's going to be a great time next week, a celebration. And uh, it's going to be great. So after service, Discover Growth Track. Uh, if you made the choice to walk with God today, we'd love to get you a free Bible, uh, some resources to, to make it work for you. We also have our this, uh, our small group fair, so let's go look at it. Let's go look at a small group that might work for you. Um, we have several, even for the youth, we got small groups, and so we want to make sure that you all sign up for that. And uh, we are so excited to announce this big announcement next week. We hope to see you there. Let me pray over you, Father, in the name of Jesus, God. Would you have your way, God? Lord, I pray over this offering that we're about to give and receive. Lord, I ask that you may do something special with it. Allow us, Lord change this community, to change the world, God. God, allow us to make a difference, Lord. We don't want to be a church that just meets us out of a room and sings some songs and hear a sermon, God. We want to be a church that gets motivated so we can leave this place to change the world, God. That's what our call is, Lord. That's what you call us to be, world changers, Father. So, God, use us and touch us in Jesus' name. Hey, guys, we're about to have our offering and tithes in this moment. And we always say at Motivation Church, we don't give for a blessing, but we give we give from a blessing. And so we would love for you to, to partner with us and give today. I, I can promise you this is good ground that you're giving to. And so uh, as the buckets are passed, you can give or you can give online or you can text the number uh, on your screen that you can give. And it's great opportunities. We're going to sing a song as we give and celebrate all that God is doing. We hope to see you in the small group fair, Discover Grow Track. Make sure you get a donut before you leave. We love you guys. See you next week.